I ended the Iran deal. It was a ridiculous deal. Frankly, that deal is an embarrassment to the United States. I think it was one of the most incompetently drawn deals I've ever seen. President Trump has been slamming the Iran nuclear deal since before his election, and now Iran is uh, proving him right. Yeah, the country is upping the ante and admitting to exceeding the cap on uranium enrichment drawn out in that deal. All right, so at this point, where are the other world leaders who insisted on keeping this deal intact? That's the question this morning, Vice President and Foreign Policy, for Foreign Policy at the Heritage Foundation, Jared, James Carafano, joins us now to weigh in. James, thank you for waking up early this morning for us. All right, so Iran is essentially trying to bully European leaders to find a way around sanctions. Um, what happens here? Does Iran, do, do European leaders cave or do they side with the U.S.? Well, first of all, I think it's increasingly likely that more Europeans will side with the U.S. I think Britain in particular, I think when they get a new conservative government, I think that government will just cleanly break with the Europeans and line up with the United States. Mm -hmm. That puts the others in a very difficult position on the one hand. And on the other hand, I mean, the, the Iranians have given them kind of a, 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 a Hobson's choice because if they want to preserve the deal at all, ironically, they're going to have to sanction the Iranians for exceeding and violating the deal or go to arbitration, all of which would just put more pressure and isolate the Iranians. Yeah. But, but is it even a deal anymore? I mean, that's the, the question is no. for people, yeah, I mean, yeah. once the United States pulled out, why would Iran listen to anything the deal said anyways? Well, I, you know, I think the real news story that, that people have kind of missed, if you read the, the JPCOA, Iran's first statement is, we had no interest in any kind of nuclear weapons program. Hmm. Ex uh. exceeding, the, exceeding, the exceeding the enrichment clearly demonstrates, that has nothing to do with a civil nuclear program. There's no reason in a civil nuclear program to advance their enrichment. So it just clearly demonstrates that they lied when they signed the agreement to begin with. Well, so well, they, the well, deal Iran is a sham. Say, to push back a little bit, they say they're only going to enrich to 5% so that they can have a nuclear reactor and fuel it. And you got to get to 90% to have a bomb, right? Well, that's that's true, but the point is, is is once you've once you've demonstrated you can, and this is this is kind of the original sin of the deal. Once you've demonstrated you can enrich, it's just a question of yeah. how much you enrich them, so, and and they 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 have the ability to advance and improve their technology, which was the great concern a lot of us had that essentially it. The Iran deal was never a break. It was just kind of a pause button. And that, I don't think, satisfied, didn't satisfy the countries in the region, didn't satisfy the United, the United States. And people forget when the, when the deal was originally negotiated, many of the European leaders were deeply skeptical, and they told the Americans, you're giving the Iranians too soft a deal. All right. Uh, well, Iran says if they don't get what they want, essentially, if they can't sell oil internationally within 60 days, uh, they will continue to break from the nuclear deal. Essentially, they could be uh, enriching more uranium. Uh, what happens then? Do we get to that 60-day mark, or will something happen before then? Um, you know, we might well get to that 60-day mark. I think, I think we make a mistake when we design our strategy for dealing with Iran predicated on knowing exactly what the Iranians are up to. Uh, you know, one, one argument is, is, look, they're just getting ready for the next round of negotiation by improving their position by being more nuclear threatening. So they have a, a stronger bargaining chip the next time around. Um, or they could just hope that maybe they, they fluster people enough that maybe Trump will get reelected and the next person will come in and give them a good deal. Does it, I mean, does it show you? I mean, the fact that they love the JCPO, uh, JCPOA, the deal so much that they want it back so badly, does that indicate that this really was a bad deal on our side? Well, again, I, I think this was a, the massive mistake the Iranians made the first time around is, is the, the Obama administration was so desperate for a deal, and they, and they can spin any way they want. I mean, that's the truth, that the Iranians essentially got everything they wanted. Yeah. And, and they needed that, not just because they wanted it, but because the hardliners, they had to show them that it was worth it. But they knew it was too good a deal to be true, and, and that's why it's kind of backfired in their face. They just, they just took too much, and they should have known they were never going to get away with it. But again, they thought Hillary Clinton was going to get elected, that she would be committed to following Obama, and that they'd get at least four more years of this. All right. Uh, Emmanuel Macron says that he's going to try and find a way to get European leaders together to talk to Iran. And then, of course, President Trump wants to talk to European leaders about yeah. this as well. Uh, all right, James, thank you for your insight. We appreciate it. The thank time you. now is 8.